welcome to the John 330 podcast. He must increase, I must decrease, is the message John 330 invites us to live. Incorporating this into our everyday lives can be a challenge. What keeps your fire burning? We have many wonderful ways to stay close to our faith, whether it be the Mass, spiritual readings, prayer, adoration, or the Rosary. This is Catholic Faith Life, and here's our host, Jason Nunez. Welcome to episode number 53 of the John 330 Podcast. This is your host, Jason Nunez. I want to welcome a very special guest today. We have Mr. Brian Mercier from YouTube fame. Hey, Brian, how are you? I am great. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your morning and sharing with us what keeps your fire burning for our Catholic faith. We appreciate it very much. Uh, before we get into our episode, we're going to go ahead and say the litany of um, humility prayer. Uh, we are going to begin every episode with this prayer going forward as a, uh, as of episode 50. So um, I, this prayer has grown on me qu- quite a bit. I encourage you all to, you, you can uh, look it up on Google. I believe they have it on UCCB. Uh, I particularly got the this ver- this uh, particular, the wording, the version of it from um, um, EWTN. So by all means, I uh, recommend that you all look that up and follow along every time you hear the episode. So here we go. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. <coughs> come, Holy Spirit, come. O Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, Deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred to others, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus that others may be loved more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, that others may be preferred to me in everything. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it, Mm -hmm. that others may become holier than I, provided that I may become as holy as I should. Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Mm -hmm. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All righty, Brian. Thank you very much for that. If you can uh, do us all a favor and introduce yourself, please, I greatly appreciate it. My name is Brian Mercier, and um, Brian with a Y. And uh, most people know me as Catholic Brian. That's kind of my tag. Yep. I'm a professional Catholic speaker. I am a YouTuber, and I consider myself to do uh, full-time apologetics and evangelization. Uh, basically, I want to save souls. I want to change lives, and I want to be the spark that helps to set our church and our world on fire. Um, that's kind of my goal. That's kind of my vision. And I've been speaking for about, uh, 20 years. You probably wouldn't know it if you ever met me, but I used to dress in all black. I used to carry weapons. I used to want to hurt people. 
And my mom sent me to Franciscan University um, of Steubenville, one of the best Catholic colleges in America, to try to get some more Jesus in me. Uh, it worked. And then that's kind of where my big conversion took place. And uh, ever since that day, I told Jesus that I just wanted to heal people the way he healed me, to help people the way he helped me, and to help people encounter him in a life-transforming way. And so that's kind of how my ministry was born, and that's kind of how I got here today. Wow. That that part there, I did not know that about you, about your background. So thank you for sharing that. That's honestly very topical and very relevant now, especially what's 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 happening in the news and what, what unfortunately keeps happening. Um, God bless your mother. <laughs> you know, Amen. she 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 knew exactly what she was doing, and you know, God definitely heard her prayers. And um, the work that you're doing is definitely um, is definitely a blessing to her. And um, that's wonderful. That's that's beautiful. Is actually is, is what that is there. So taking a step back and look looking at the big picture, um, you went to Franciscan, Fran, Franciscan University. So you know you were definitely filled with, you know, uh, uh, with an, with an environment of priests and nuns and brothers and a lot of highly scholarly people and you know people that know theology front and back and they're very spiritual. And now you 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 mentioned that you're a Catholic speaker, so you you know tour tour, tour the country, and you give talks at uh, retreats at conferences. You're on YouTube, um, sharing the beautiful aspects of our faith. Not only the beautiful aspects, but what I feel is crucial. You know how to defend the faith, and mm-hmm. you tackle a lot of difficult topics. You know I, I saw that you just uploaded um, another video uh, today, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, about the Catholic Church and and um, uh, gay marriage, you know that's a very difficult, raw topic to openly discuss and kind of help try and teach people about. Especially now, where when we say something, someone's going to get offended. You do this full time. How do you, Brian? How do you keep your fire burning for a Catholic faith? How, what keeps you coming back every day and spending countless hours editing these videos and touring the country, time away from your family, and just continuing to spread the word? That is a great question. Uh, if you will allow me to back up a little bit, <clears throat> I want to back up again to college, to Franciscan University, you got it. Um, because that is where I acquired the fire, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> um I actually had a very St. Paul style conversion where God knocked me off my horse, um, kind of, you know, gave me a roundhouse kick to the face and really showed me that he was real. And I had very powerful um, spiritual encounters with him over the next year where we, he would heal my heart, heal my soul, heal everything and put my life back together. I always say that he took out all of my hate that I had for everybody and he replaced it with an overflowing love. He took out all my peace. He took out, I'm sorry, he took out all my sadness. He took out all my brokenness and he replaced it with a peace and a joy and a bubbling happiness, which I've had ever since. Um, so really God transformed me from the inside out and he gave me more happiness than I could have found in 10 life times. Now, with that being said, I kind of uh, almost lost my faith, um, which is another part of my story we maybe could talk later on. Um, But I ended up having this fire that I just wanted to serve Jesus. And I went home to my friends and I told everybody about Jesus and how much he changed my life. And people were like, who cares? I don't. Stop right. preaching to us. You know, and I feel like time and time again, I just wanted to share my excitement and I ran into a brick wall. And a lot of times my friends, you know, actually convinced me to go back to sinning to my old lifestyle sometimes. And every time I went back to college, Jesus forgave me. Every time I went back to Franciscan University, you know, Jesus uh, kind of took me back, put his arms around me and said, start over, try again. And eventually I came to the point where I said, all my friends don't care about me. They don't care about my faith. They don't care about my life. Jesus is the only one accepting me for who I am. He's the only one who's actually forgiving me, loving me, even though I spit in his face all the time. And so that's the point where I said, listen, Jesus, I'm choosing this day to live for you only for you and all for you for the rest of my life. And I will never, ever go back to the way I was living. And ever since then, I mean, I had three years at Steubenville just to fill that fire within me. And when I came home, it was so hard. I mean, nobody had any faith, like in the sense that like there were no groups, there were no Bible studies. I couldn't Mm -hmm. find anything. So I was alone. So from that day on and to this day, 
I've kept my fire by praying a lot. I mean a lot. Like I start every day before I even start the day, I pray for one hour every morning. Um, even when I, you know, was working at schools and I had to be there at seven in the morning, I would get up at 515, pray for an hour, then shower, get dressed, make lunch and go off to school. Um, so I think really prayer is really important. Saying the rosary has been an incredibly powerful prayer in my life. That that prayer has changed me. That prayer has really just given me the grace and the peace and the perseverance to keep going on. Um, of course, uh, adoration. I love to spend a lot of time in adoration, just quiet before Jesus. Because honestly, if I'm always giving, 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 and I'm not refilling the well, then I can't keep giving forever. A, a human being can only give so much. So that's why I try to pray a lot in the morning and I try to do adoration. I pray before I go to bed at night and really I just try to be filled with God. I love to do praise and worship. I love to give myself to God and just, you know, open my hands up in prayer and let him fill me with his grace and his love and his healing and his peace and whatever he needs. But long story short, I pray a lot. Um, I try to surround myself with uh, good Catholics. I started a Bible study out of my house. Uh, I started. Uh, I took over Catholic Underground here in Connecticut, oh, okay. and so I do a lot of um, good young adult Catholic communities here in the state. Because if you go at it alone, it's difficult. But if you're surrounded with like-minded people who can help you, it's easier to keep the fire going. That is very very true. Um, I, I can certainly understand the whole. Um, a community aspect around starting yourself around like-minded people and um, you know helping that keep your fire going um, Catholic underground that's a I've actually I've, I've come across that before in the past just kind of when me going through my quote-unquote reversion I was I was born Catholic received all my sacraments you know baptized as a baby received com- received first communion um, when I was in elementary school and was confirmed in high school um, if you know, as the same story that you have probably heard thousands and millions of times, you know, grew up, kind of fell away, and then came back. Um, and me, kind of learning and kind of researching in my own to fill my fire, uh, Catholic Underground is one of those resources that I actually came across online. So that that's awesome to hear that that's something that you're that you're a part of. Amen. I love it. In fact, it started in New York, as you probably know, right. and they. I go there, you know, a few times a year and they have probably six to seven hundred young adults every month there. It's actually amazing. Uh, so, so many people from Connecticut, the next state over, were going to New York. So we said, why don't we just start one in Connecticut? And so my old roommate actually started it and I've recently taken it over. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'll make sure to put a link to CatholicUnderground.com in the show description. So that way, you know, listeners can can find can find that easily and, you know, look Look over that in, in information on there. I'm actually on the website right now, and there's uh, some some great stuff on here. Um, Catholic Underground Weekly. Is this a, like a is this a, a weekly um, like podcast or a weekly show or a weekly blog? Uh, I have no idea. That's probably the New York one. If you went to the actual website, oh, gotcha. ours is Catholic Underground CT for CT. Connecticut. Gotcha. I can yeah. def- I can definitely fix that and put that on there, so that way you know we can look at, at, at your work as well. So that's that's wonderful stuff there. Um, can you kind of speak a little bit more about that, that Franciscan experience you had? And one, one, one aspect that that I'm, I'm currently fascinated with, fascinated with is I I have two teenagers. I I have one teenager and one that's 11. So 13 and, 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 uh, and an 11 year old, they go to faith formation and when, when they're teenagers, even at home, you know, when, when you're trying to kind of encourage them about the faith and teach them and set that example and live your faith and, you know, literally walk the walk. And you, you take them to the faith formation class, you know, there's a lot of kids, unfortunately, that are there because their parents dropped them off. So, you know, they're on their phone, they're not paying attention, they're not listening. Um, we have a ministry here called Teen Acts, or we have a ministry here called called Acts. It's, it's, a, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a retreat over the course of a weekend and a lot of change a lot of lives change over that weekend. We have a teen version, and I see the teens go from not really engaged or interested throughout the whole faith formation year, and then when they go through that retreat, you know, literally that flame is lit. So, you know, I'll be speaking with someone soon about that process, but just kind of can speak to 
the environment at Franciscan and how how do they help somebody that's you know the way you quote unquote were to the way you are now? You've mentioned prayer and the rosary and adoration. That's great. That's awesome. Sustaining logs for your fire. What's that ether that was thrown on the flame that just ignited it? Well, there's a few things. Uh, the first is uh, unconditional love. Uh, when I went there, all the students were so nice. They were so friendly. They were so happy. And when I went there kind of angry, I always thought they were too happy. And anytime <laughs> a, a non-Catholic, secular type person enters the campus, the first thing they usually say after meeting a bunch of people is, why is everybody here so happy all the time? <laughs> you know, it's like that something is. that people tangibly notice, that everyone's just incredibly happy. Um, so literally, it was the opposite of high school where I was angry, where I was bullied, where I was made fun of where, you know, a lot of bad stuff happened. This was an environment of love where I actually, no one cared about me. No one in the sense that they didn't judge me. They didn't look down on me. They didn't ask about my past. They didn't ask how bad I was. They didn't ask, you know, what was wrong with me. They just loved me. They just said, Hey, we're so glad you're here. Come on in. And they introduced me to countless people. And for the first time, girls were talking to me and, you know, and uh, other people were nice to me. And so it allowed me to have a, a soil for which I could plant roots that I could start growing the flower that I, that God wanted me to grow and he could shine on it. He could rain on it and he could start growing me there. So really it's a fertile ground for growth. I mean, even people who hate it and don't want to be there and their parents send them there, they end up converting by the end. Uh, the other part of that is what Father Michael Scanlon did, who was the president there, you know, through the 70s and 80s. He took a dead school, which is just about dead. They were actually going to close the doors. And he said, I'm going to try and take it over and revive it. And he said, we're going to make it 100 percent Catholic. We're going to get rid of all the lukewarmness. We're going to you know, not cater to the world anymore. We're not going to cater to the to the people who give money. We're actually going to make this solidly Catholic. And everyone said it's going to fail by the end of the year. Not only did it not fail, it became the best Catholic school in America. In fact, Pope John Paul II said it is the model school by which all other Catholic schools should be modeled off of. And, uh, wow. and the reason why is because he made it passionately and unreservedly Catholic. And when you go there, I mean— Nine, I don't know exactly the statistics, but it's somewhere around like 90% of the students go to church every day. Mm. Every day, these students go to church. They, I mean, the confession lines are long every day. I mean, it's a, almost a reverse peer pressure. If you don't go to mass, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> reverse peer pressure, got it. <laughs> yeah. So in reality, you know, it really helped me to start praying even more. I mean, I still prayed every day, but to really enter in. Now, half the school is probably really charismatic and half the school is really traditional, right. you know, and there's kind of a little bit of a battle between them. But uh, <laughs> it, it, it allowed me to open up and to experience God in a real way that I was never able to do before. Because really, as you hinted at, catechesis, it doesn't teach us our faith. It doesn't teach us how to pray. It doesn't teach us how to know God, experience God, have an encounter with God. Most times, some churches are good, but most don't. And uh, in fact, when I do my retreats, you know, kids tell me I teach them more in an hour than they've learned in eight years of catechesis. And I don't mean that to brag. That's actually really sad. But, it, you know, it just shows like how much they're dying to learn their faith. And out at Steubenville, I not only was loved to life, but I actually learned a lot about my faith as well. The teachers, the classes, everything was just fantastic. They have an adoration um, chapel in every dorm. So wow. I could roll out of bed visit Jesus in the morning. Um, they have little Eucharistic chapels there. So it's everything about it I just loved. That's fantastic. That's that's great stuff. I can 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 you imagine the way the world would be if if we if everyone adopted that mindset that that the father had that saved you, the university to take out the influences of the world and catering to the people with money and focus on our faith. Uh, the world would certainly be a different place right now. It absolutely would be. We might actually be Catholic still. <laughs> Our church is so confused right now, yes. and there's such confusion about what we believe, who we are. We've completely lost our identity for that reason, and we need to get back to being Catholic, doing what we do best, being Catholic, the moral authority in the world. In the world is correct there. I want to speak about your YouTube channel, and of course, they can find that if they go on YouTube, and for anyone listening, you can go on YouTube and search Catholic Brian with the Y. Yep. <laughs> and and uh, you, you can find Brian's YouTube channel. He has tons and tons of videos and um, a lot of a lot of different topics that that people really wonder about. And I really one of the videos that I recently saw and uh, kind of uh, preparing for today 
was I saw a video, and I, I made a note of it. That way I could refer to it correctly. Uh, let me just find where I had it. Um, here we go. It was a video. It was defending your faith, six tips when being made fun of. Um, in short, it's a video about defending your faith, and it really it, you, you give some solid advice there and some some great advice on what to do, especially when you're whenever you're speaking with an atheist, and if an atheist you know tries to either call you out or try to speak you know against what you know we believe, you gave some great advice on on what to do, and um, I'm going to go on a limb, and I I don't I I don't think I am here. But this is apologetics, if I'm not mistaken. Would that yes. be right? Yes. So yes. for those that are listening and are not too familiar with that word, can you give us a Cliff Notes 101 basic explanation of what apologetics are? Sure. And just so people know, I not only do apologetics. Apologetics is um, – it comes from a Greek word, which means to give a defense of, kind of like in a court of law. You need to put yourself on trial and defend yourself. So, um, you know, 1 Peter 3.15 says we must always be ready to give an account to people when they ask for our why, we're, why we have faith and why we're so joyful. And so really when it comes to Catholic apologetics, what it simply is is defending your faith, having the ability to – uh, express, explain, and defend your faith in a way that's coherent and makes sense. Um, so a lot of people ask questions. A lot of people have misconceptions about the church. A lot of people are skeptical about the church. A lot of people attack the church. They just, you know, for whatever reason. So you need to be able to be able to answer their questions in a way that makes sense and doesn't kind of hit them over the head with a sledgehammer or, you know, fall into just arguing about it. Very good. Very good. Can you kind of just kind of speak a little bit more about defending your faith and specifically um I'll definitely put a link to that video, but just to kind of get just kind of get some more some more information here from you here um can you speak a little bit more to that as far as about defending your faith and kind of those tips and tricks there or not really tips and tricks, but you know the, the really the fundamentals of you know how to go ahead and do that because that's one thing that I know a lot of people shy away from you know the the, the big the big um Big fear is that I'm, you know, either someone's going to speak out about it and I'm not going to know. So, you know, how can we equip ourselves and how, you know, what, what, what is it that works for you? Sure. And most people say that, you know, I'm an expert. You know, I consider myself, I guess, an expert in Catholic apologetics. I've been doing it for 20 years. Yeah. And I only say that because when people hear me, you know, defend the faith and, you know, quote scripture and verse more than Protestants do and like no church history and all of this other stuff. That's impressive. It's like they're like they're usually like wowed by it and they like immediately despair and say things to me like, wow, that was amazing. I wish I could defend the faith like you. Wow. You know, you're just, wow. You just have it all together. How did you do, you know, and they just have this like almost awe in a sense. And they kind of imagine that I was born with this talent, you know, like kind of <laughs> born with it. And they don't realize that I was the worst defender of the faith ever when I first started. And I only tell people that I'm an expert so they know where I started. Got Literally it. the first time that I started doing apology, I pretty much cried. <laughs> um, and I have a one, it's a little bit of a, a tongue in cheek sassy video. It's a one minute video I have on my YouTube. It's called the Jehovah's Witnesses made me Catholic. And um, it basically talks about the first that first time. And I met two uh, Catholics to Jehovah's Witnesses on the street corner in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they immediately didn't even say hi. They didn't say, how are you? They just said, oh, you're Catholic. Well, Jesus didn't start the Catholic Church. You know, Constantine did. He was a pagan and he blended paganism and he blended Christianity and it became the Catholic Church. And he actually got everyone to worship pagan gods and all this other stuff. And while that didn't seem right to me, I had no idea how to defend it. I didn't know the answers. And they said, did you know that Jesus isn't God? I mean, you Christians, you think, you Catholics, you think Jesus is God, but Jesus himself himself, you know, in, uh, when he's on the cross, what did he say? He said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So if Jesus calls God, God, how in the world can you keep thinking that he's God? And he said, the father is greater than I. And when we, he was in the garden, who was he praying to himself? You know, so they gave me all these things and it didn't sound right when I heard it, but like, I didn't know how to defend it. So exit stage, right. Brian running and screaming for his life. And, uh, I went home and I'm not someone who likes to blindly believe. Leave. So I went home and looked up the answers and I started studying them and tearing through books and looking it up. And the next week I went 
back and I brought them the answers and they had more objections and I had no idea what to say. I was totally embarrassed and belittled again. And so I went back and looked up the answers. This went on for six months. I just, every time I licked my wounds and just kept running off and looking up answers. And every time I'd get a little bit smarter and you know, after a few months, I'd be able to give one or two things that would make them think or make them have to adjust their arguments. And then after six months, I started becoming pretty coherent, you know, and arguments and figuring out that the Catholic church is true because I studied all the religions just in case. How did I know the Catholic church is true? And um, that was kind of the debut of my apologetics. That was the very beginning of it. I also went uh, with the Legionnaires of Christ on a door-to-door retreat for a week where they trained you in apologetics, and then you go door-to-door to evangelize. And so I had to learn a lot of other things. I had to deal with a lot of Protestants who said, you know, the Catholic Church worships Mary. You know, find me Pope in the Bible, they said. If you can find me the word Pope, then I will become Catholic today. If you find me the word purgatory in the Bible, I will become Catholic today. But guess what, Mr. Catholic? It's not there. And so I didn't really know what to say to this. And they're like, why do you confess your sins to a priest? He's a man. He's a sinner. You should confess it straight to God. The Bible is clear that only God can forgive sins. So this, in a nutshell, is apologetics, learning to defend your faith against all these things. So needless to say, you know, a year later after all of this, I knew my faith really well. Five years later, I knew it really well. And I was going and knocking on Jehovah's Witnesses church doors, and I was going and knocking on Protestant church doors, and I was evangelizing them. And, um, you know, it got to my head a bit. You know, I became really cocky, you know, and I, I was like, yeah, we're right. Everyone else is wrong. And everyone goes through that at the beginning. It's something that needs to be learned. Sure. But I just, before I get back to my YouTube channel and answer your question, sorry for the tangent. No, you're good. You're good. <laughs> uh, I want to highlight a, a story that I talk about in my first book that I wrote. My first book, just in case anyone wants to read it, it teaches you apologetics more with atheism and skepticism and that sort of thing. But I talk about my story in that book and uh, the book's called, Why Do You Believe in God? And uh, there's a story in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, when I was after talking to the Jehovah's Witnesses and after knowing a lot about my faith and evangelizing, this one lady came up to me. I was in front of an abortion clinic, and I was just praying there. And she comes up nose to nose with me, literally right in my face, and starts yelling at the top of her lungs how I have no right to be here, that I'm a man. It's not my subject. I don't have ovaries. It's not my decision. So get the heck out of here. I have no idea what I'm talking about. And back then, you know, after I became haughty and cocky and less than humble, you know, I had a temper, too, when people just, you know, got in my face. So yeah. I kind of started giving it right back to her and telling her she's not on the path to heaven. She's going, you know, where and kind of gave her a few choice words myself. And then I walked away in anger and patting myself on the back on how wonderful I did. And uh, five minutes later, after cooling down, I came back and what I saw next would change my life. Absolutely, completely, 100 percent. And what I saw was this lady crying her eyes out so hard. She was like coughing up her lungs and she was laying on the cement. My friend Bridget, who couldn't explain her faith to save her soul, she had no apologetic skills, was sitting Indian style on the cement and she had this lady and her head was in Bridget's lap. And my friend Bridget was the most lovingly you could ever imagine, just stroking this lady's hair, just stroking her hair as she cried in her lap. And I, I looked at that and I said, wow, what did Bridget do to get through to her? How, what did I do wrong? <laughs> That's how blind I was. But in the end, God struck me with a lightning bolt and showed me that it's all about love. love. It's not about anger. It's not about how much you know. It's not about how well you argue. It's all about love. She did in two seconds what I couldn't do yelling at this lady in five minutes. And uh, I probably turned this lady away from the church for the next 20 years with my bad example. Hopefully she brought her back to the church by showing her that love. And, um, you know, she broke through her heart of stone. She probably didn't say anything. She probably didn't evangelize. She just loved her. So that moment changed my life. Ever since that day, about 15 years ago, I have mixed you know, I know people say, you know, people argue about politics and religion. Well, I've never even gotten a heated discussion face to face with someone in 15 years because God's just so filled my heart with love that I just want to love people. And I've learned to ask questions and I've learned to just to find out where they're at, why they believe what they do, the misconceptions they have. And that's the Honestly, that's what apologetics is. And so that's why I start my YouTube channel, too, because I, I not only want people to come to know God, experience him and find out how to come closer to him. I not only want to answer people's questions that they have, and I have a whole folder on that, but I want people to know their faith and be able to explain it. And that's not something that people teach us very much. And that's why I created that video. 
um, which is part one. And so to answer your question, a really long <laughs> side topic, sidetrack, um, I think how to live your faith and how to get into apologetics more, as you can see from my story, it starts by just trying. Most people right. don't ever start because they don't think they can, and that is a lie from the devil. That's a lie from the devil, that you can't defend your faith. What did you learn to walk day one when you were two years old? Give me a break. Did you learn to speak day one? Give me a break. Why don't you give yourself any credit to have a learning curve when you're defending your faith? You're not going to do it right the first time or the second time. But if you can just love someone, if you can show them joy, I've converted more people to the Catholic Church and from atheism and all these other religions through my will witness and through my example and through my joy than my arguments, to be honest. Um, sure, those are helpful, but it's really our witness. That's what's most important. Our witness, our witness. I, I love the example you give about, you know, did you learn to walk right when you were two day one? That, that makes perfect sense because you don't. You get up and you stumble and that, that mindset of remembering when a child is learning to walk, that's the way we should approach life. Try and when you fall, you get up and you try it again. Amen to that. And I did that over and over and over again. And I, you know what, if you want to learn to defend your faith, honestly, watch my YouTube videos. Just people have said that those have helped them so much, you know, because at family dinners, you know, or the holidays that, that these arguments will come up. I just put a very controversial one up today, you know, on, um, what does the Catholic church teach about gay marriage? Right. Uh, you know, that's a big topic that, especially with Pope Francis and things people are saying, he said, and, you know, there's a lot of confusion about it. And that's the biggest question that I get. People just honestly don't know. People say, well, if, you know, God loves all people and including gay people, then why can't they get married? Why, why, why can't they love too? Why, why do they have to be banned? And that is a great question. Here's the deal. We've been asking great questions for 50 years in our church, and we haven't got any good answers. And that frustrates me. That's why I do what I do. That's why I go into churches and teach apologetics. I have one-day trainings. I have three-day trainings. I have week-long trainings. Like Whatever people want, I love to teach apologetics because that's why people are leaving the church in droves because they have good questions, rational questions well thought out questions and we haven't answered them. And that's one of the reasons for my YouTube is to help give people the answers to their questions because only then can you have that light bulb moment. Only then can you connect the dots and only then does your faith make sense and you want to live it. Yes. Yes, indeed. Great stuff. Great stuff. It's going, going, going through your channel and it isn't really, it, it's really in depth. You cover a lot of different topics. Yesterday I was watching your teachings about the Catholic truth about Reiki and, mm. you know, we're not talking, these are, you know, they're not hour long videos, you know, they're not a, a, a hour, they're not an hour long podcast, <laughs> but you know, they're, they're 15 minute videos, 11 minute videos. They're with enough time that you can digest these topics and walk away learning something from. That's great. And I'm actually going to remake that video because it's not even a video. It's audio. It's horrible quality. And it's yet my second most watched video on YouTube. I don't know, understand why. But, so I'm going to remake it. I'm actually have a book deal with our Sunday visitor right now. Beautiful. And I'm publishing a book with them in October on the, uh, the, the dangers of the New Age movement. So I'm going to – a lot of Catholics have questions on Reiki, on yoga, on centering prayer, right, on right. the law of attraction and a lot of other things. So I'm actually going to help answer those questions. What's the Catholic position, what can we do, what can't we do, and how to know the difference. Um, so I'm going to be talking about Reiki a lot more. I give a lot of seminars on New Age topics and stuff like that as well. That that's great. I'm happy you brought up yoga because that's one that's one topic that that I myself have have researched. And there's even people. There's a lot of Catholics that I know that do yoga. And I'm like, oh, you, you may you may want to rethink that. No, it's great for your body. It's great, you know, for your flexibility and all this stuff. And you know, I'm I'm not being I'm not being mindful of of the spirituality part of it. I'm just doing the poses. But when you approach it just from the poses, you're still kind of you're still participating in the aspect of yoga. So I, I kind of figure I would just kind of not be involved in any aspect of it at all. Uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on people, on, on, you know, people that say, well, I'm not really looking at the whole spirituality part of yoga. I'm really doing the poses for the exercise. What well, are the dangers of that? Um, let me ask you a question. What is yoga? Uh, this is what I ask people. Perfect. I ask people, what is yoga? Almost nobody knows. Exactly. They think, oh, well, it's stretching and it's exercise. Right. No, it's not. Right. It's not at all. If you're doing stretching and exercise, that's fine. 
There's nothing wrong or evil with stretching and exercise. Right. Yoga implies something more. So what is yoga? Yoga actually comes from a root word, yuj, uh, which means union or integration. And the whole goal of yoga is to unite your body, mind, and soul, which, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But then you have to take it a step further and unite it with the universal consciousness, which they see as Brahman or some force of the universe or something like that. Now, here's the deal. Pen, um, a, a sage about 2,000 years ago, a Hindu sage, um, he actually codified all of the forms of yoga into what's known as the royal path of yoga. And it's pretty much the most authoritative type. And he actually created what's known as eight branches on a tree. Now, the first, th this is what makes up yoga, these eight branches. The first two branches are dietary laws, purification, chastity, different things like that, preparing yourself for the journey. Mm -hmm. Catholics can agree with that. That's a good thing. Uh, number three are the stretches and the exercises. Number four is uh, med uh, breathing. Number five is meditation. The sixth branch is concentration. You know, so you're getting deeper and deeper into you get to branch eight, which is samadhi, as they call it, and losing yourself, breaking free from the bond of karma and becoming one with the universe. Now, Catholics or people in general, they take branch number three, which is the stretches and exercises, mm -hmm. and they call it yoga. Right. And now this totally offends all the Hindus because they're like, um, no, it's not. <laughs> you don't go home and, you know, drink wine and eat some bread and call it the Lord's Supper. Just because you drink wine right. and eat bread doesn't mean you're actually participating in Holy Communion. Sure. And so likewise, if you just do the exercises, you're not actually doing yoga. Yoga is so much more. So the long and short of it, and you can read so much more in my chapter on this when it comes out and the video I'm making for YouTube, is that – um, Catholics can't practice yoga because that entails a lot of spirituality. It entails a lot of talk of self. It entails a lot of, um, you know, the alm and the, um, and by the way, the self, when we talk about anytime the self is talking, connecting to yourself in yoga, it's always capitalized because it's your divine self. It's your oneness with all the universe. It's talk about energy and chakras. These are all things that are incompatible with the Catholic faith. Now, if you take just the stretches, like one of my friends is a physical therapist and he takes some of the stretches and postures from yoga, which, you know, they, they work, they're good. And he just applies those to his old people in physical therapy. I'm okay with that because that's not yoga. It's just exercise. And a lot of those exercises can be found in Pilates and other exercise programs as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the danger in this is that if Catholics, a lot of Catholics go to uh, studios and they say, well, I don't do the spiritual aspect. I right. just do the stretching. Right. Well, if you're going to studios, I doubt it. You know, at, at number one. Number two, even if you are, th there's a thing in the Catholic Church which is really serious and it's called the sin of scandal. You know, the fact that you're seeing, well, you know, Joshua, he's a good Catholic and he goes to yoga, so it's okay. Right. So then maybe all these other people will start going to yoga and their classes have a lot of bad stuff in there. So I always counsel people, if you want to just do the exercise of, fine, you know, it's not yoga and don't say you're doing yoga. There's no such thing as Christian yoga. You know, you can't like baptize it and that sort of thing because your yoga is something. It's eight branches. It's a whole way of spiritual enlightenment that the Hindus have had for 3000 plus years. And uh, so for Catholics to try to baptize that, see, but, but, and in the old days, Catholics took pagan practices. They got rid of all the incompatible parts and they changed the name. We take pagan practices. We can't discern the difference between the incompatible parts. So we keep a lot of them and we keep the same name. So it's all very confusing and it's still half pagan. So if you want to just do the stretches in your own home, okay. But don't say you're doing yoga because you're not. Makes sense. Makes sense. We've covered um, some good stuff and I, I could really speak to you all day, Ryan. We're, we're going to go and get to our parting questions here. Before I do that, though, uh, I saw your, your video about your confirmation retreat in Pecos, Texas. <laughs> and it never, I, I'm, I'm from El Paso. So um, I did a previous podcast episode with uh, the Praise and Worship Band, um, Laudate, who I believe Laudate. is at the same, yeah, Laudate, exactly, who's at the same retreat you were at. That's actually how I kind of got in touch with you. I, um, uh, Michael, who was one of the band members, kind of gave me your name and said, you need to talk to this guy, look him up on YouTube, all that stuff there. So I was like, okay, awesome. I'll, I'll do that. And here we are. But uh, I saw your video come out about a week ago, and I just I had to laugh about the the whole everyone in Texas drives a truck, <laughs> and and you're just panning the parking lot, and there is one compact car, and every other vehicle <laughs> in that parking lot was a truck. 
It's so true. That is hilarious. I, I take it that's not an East Coast thing. Nope. Most people drive cars or SUVs. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yeah. Sorry. No, you can't. I have allergies up here with the spring. Love it. Um, no, I love speaking in Pecos, though. I love traveling to different parts of the country. I've actually started vlogging, as you saw. Yep. I want to vlog my different trips because I like seeing different cultures. I like seeing different places. I like worshiping with different Catholics around the country. I love that. And uh, wherever God wants me to spread the fire, I'm good. I'm, I'm open to that. Excellent. Uh, the the whole um, killing time by playing Pokemon Go was was a pretty good aspect of of the video too. <laughs> My kids like that part. They like, he plays Pokemon. I'm like, of course. You know, I don't, but he does. So Catholics can be normal. They can do fun things. <laughs> I have like. You know, I pray a lot, you know, but I also have a lot of fun. I have like many video game systems here at my house. My wife and I play Legend of Zelda together, Halo, you know, different things like that. And so, you know, I don't say, you know, when you become a Catholic, hardcore Catholic, you don't have to give up your life. You just have to put Jesus first and make him the number one. Right, right. I believe it was St. John Bosco that said, I'm going to I'm going to get the quote wrong, but something to the effect of run, jump, have fun, but do not sin. Amen. So <laughs> that's uh, that's kind of something that I try to kind of be mindful of. So, yes, we can still have fun. Tons and tons of fun, actually. Um, <laughs> all righty. So we're going we're to get to our parting questions here. So, Brian, if you could have a superpower, what would it be? That is a difficult question. I normally would say flying because I've always wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. But if I think of the percussions of, you know, like Iron Man flying and everyone wants to kill him, like that wouldn't be good. So sure. maybe invisibility would be cool. Invisibility. Um, Invisibility, yeah, and then you know that would be safe. Um, either flying or invisibility, it's hard to choose between the two. Gotcha, gotcha. Even if you could just have um, a cloak, like like say in um, Harry Potter, you just have the cloak to kind of throw yourself over, and then you're invisible. Yeah, that'd be good. Who is your favorite saint? Who? That's a really hard one. Yeah, that's a one right there, right? <laughs> I. So hard because I like I generally am attracted to all the patron saints of apologetics. Um, obviously, uh, St. Francis de Sales, patron saint of apologetics. He's responsible for converting over 60,000 Protestants back to the Catholic faith. And it was through hard work, through writing Catholic tracts and pamphlets and going door to door. And he was chased by dogs. He had to sleep in trees, tying himself to a tree with a belt so he didn't get killed. Like in the, wow. in the winter, I do. So this guy was hardcore, passionately Catholic. And he had a vile violent temper but over the years he developed this thing where at the end of his life nobody even knew he had a temper because he was so gentle and so mild and so holy so not only was he a hardcore apologist he was super holy as well so he's one of my favorites for sure beautiful saint francis de sales pray for us amen if you could describe how you live your faith with a hashtag what would it be hashtag passion I love it. By seeing just one of your YouTube videos, I can understand why that would be your hashtag right there. <laughs> yes. Hashtag, uh, hashtag on fire. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. And what message do you want to leave our listeners with? I want to leave our listeners with the message of living your faith 100%, going for it. Don't compromise. Don't do anything to uh, really – just slow yourself down. Pray. You know, don't pray at the end of your life. Don't pray. If you don't even pray, then you're not on the path to heaven. I mean, one priest said per, per, uh, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. If we're not preparing ourselves, then we're not getting there. So I want to challenge them to live their faith with purpose and passion every day. If they don't know how to do that, start reading spiritual books. Go out and buy Introduction to the Devout Life by St. Francis de Sales. It's a fantastic book, which is literally the only book you need to know to get started on the path to holiness. But become the person God made you to be. And not only will you find happiness, but you will change the world in some way beautiful that's a that's another resource there and I'll, I'll put that on the show description as well uh to that book there so that way people can can find that and um hopefully add that to their library and that and and read it not just to add it and have it there because i know that i'm guilty of that i cannot go to a store without buying a book and i go home and i tell myself i'm going to read it so i kind of have a stack of books that i'm going to read and i will um one of those on my list is um from Cardinal Sarah about silence. That's it's on my book stand. And I'm so very Mine too. 
it's it's there. I just I got to do it. You know, I got to do it. So and I will. So <laughs> I want to do that one, too. Awesome. Awesome. Maybe we can read it and we can hook back up again and have an episode about the book. That'd be great. That would be fantastic. Awesome. Awesome. So um, where can our listeners find you? I know they can find YouTube online, but go ahead and plug your YouTube channel, plug your website, whatever information you want to provide. So that way everyone has Thank access you. You know, to, your, to your information. Thank you so much. Um, if people want to hire me for retreats, confirmation retreats, parish missions, um, adult retreats, conferences, family conferences, whatever, um, they can go to my website, which is Catholic Brian, B R Y A N, CatholicBrian.org. And uh, you can find me on social media, YouTube, and my hashtag is Catholic Brian for almost all of it um, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. Um, you can find me on all of it. My blog is on my website and my YouTube is also Catholic Brian, which I would ask people to subscribe to. And, um, anything you want, any questions you have, you can look me up on one of those and I would love to uh, answer your questions. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, I want to thank you for taking time out of your day and sharing with us what keeps your fire burning for our Catholic faith. In John three thirty, we do find that he must increase. I must decrease. I want to give a very special thank you to our executive producer, Dr. Jeff Vista, who has been a continued supporter of the John 30 podcast in the background. Thank you so much for your generosity and for your support. I want to begin my thank yous. Um, uh, just a moment here. Just want to, want to begin my thank yous to all who have recently purchased a T-shirt for me. As mentioned in the previous episode, my family, they totally surprised me, and they put my new logo on a T-shirt. And it came out super, super cool. And I want to start thanking people by name of who purchased shirts and who is supporting um, the the podcast. I have some ideas, and I, I'm on the brink of having these ideas be made public on what I'm doing, working very hard in, in, in the background to get this done and something that hopefully will be coming up in June. So stay tuned for that. But um, I want to thank Alan King. I want to thank Gloria Contreras, uh, Joe Padilla, Suki Fierro, Ceci Marquez, Deanna, and Sam Corona. Thank you guys so much. Manny Padilla with uh, Zion Music Ministry. Thank you guys. Terry and David Gomez. Thank you for your support. Suki de la Rosa, who is my godmother. Thank you for, for your support. Um, Scott and Sylvia Graves. Thank you guys very much once again. Uh, Patsy Quinones. I have a long list of others to name, so I'm going to spread this out over the period over the next couple episodes. Uh, but I want to start thanking people by name for purchasing a shirt and supporting me. So thank you guys very much. It is much, much appreciated. Uh, for anyone listening, if you want to purchase a shirt, send me an email. If you want to be a guest, send me an email. Go to john 330 gmail.com. Send me an email. I'll be happy to correspond to you that way. If you like our Facebook page, I can also uh, correspond to you that way as well. And uh, if, you want to be, if you want to be a guest, by all means, just let me know. Be happy to go and do this as it, as it happens right now. Brian is in the East Coast. He's in a different time zone. I'm in San Antonio. So we can do this in person if you are local. But if you're not, not a problem. I can give you a phone call. We can record it that way. Brian and I are on Skype. So we can certainly record a conversation that way and share with the world how you keep your fire burning for our Catholic faith. Um, if you happen to listen on Apple Podcasts, if I can please ask you to subscribe, rate, and review the more five star the more five star ratings and positive reviews there are, the higher this podcast will come up in the ratings and in the search results when people search for a podcast in regards to Catholic faith, God, Jesus, spirituality, um, Christian, Catholic, any way that they search. Um, so if you could do that, that would help me out quite a bit. And we are going to end this episode the way the Nunez family ends our episode every time we attend Mass. And that is simply by saying the Saint Michael, uh, the intercessory prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel. Um, so we're, we're going to do that now. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him. We humbly pray. And do thou, the Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brian, once again, thanks for your time. Thank you so much, and keep up the good work you're doing. Yes, sir. All right, everyone, thank you for listening. Have a good rest of your day, and God bless you all.
From the day I leapt in the womb To the joy of the empty tomb I know he lived and died for me From heaven high above A voice came down with the dove This is my son and I am pleased He must increase so I must decrease And now my heart is open 